Hey, welcome to Speechless. We're glad to have you here this beautiful Thursday day. You know, it sure it's 43 degrees out it was today, but it's just interesting if this was the fall, we'd say it's really cold. <laughs> but since it's the spring, we're saying this is warm. But we're glad to have you here. This is going to be a jam-packed show. Uh, the major issue is going to be about a ban on change therapy. Legislation is proposed and will more than likely have a hearing on this ban on change therapy. And you may say, what is that? I can't give change for money anymore or I got to have counseling over it. No, uh, it's something more than that. Uh, significantly more. It affects a lot of people and you need to know about this because of all the implications of parental rights, uh, what your children are going to be taught, um, what therapists can do and can't do. It's very, very fascinating and it's scary and you need to hear what's going on. And it's just piling on to what's taking place in the legislature right now. And so I'm going to give some updates on the anti-bullying bill, the judicial constitutional amendment. Um, com well, that, that, that's about it, those two things. And, and other updates on other issues before we get to discussing this bill that's going through the legislature. And um, folks, it is scary out there. But first... I want to talk about Andrew H Henderson, the, the man that videotaped a Ramsey County uh, sheriff person uh, out in public and got arrested for that. The sheriff destroyed the video intentionally. They know what they're doing. It's a sheriff with 30 years experience, or deputy sheriff, who I, I don't know the exact title that she had, uh, but with a lot of experience destroyed the evidence and said, oh, it was an accident. It just doesn't happen when you have that much experience. You know what to do. She didn't follow procedures. He ended up being charged for videotaping uh, and uh, uh, this event that the sheriff was involved with. Uh, and what happened then, he was charged. He had his jury trial. He had the fortitude to stick through it and, of course, was found not guilty, as he should have been. But an update this same instance, very, very similar, happened. Matter of fact, the details are so close. Uh, it happened in Baltimore where a, a person was videotaping uh, the, the police there. The evidence was destroyed of the videotape. The, that person also had the ACLU defend them, won a $25,000 settlement, plus the attorney got $220,000. I always wonder about that. How does the attorney get more than the victim of, the, of, of their rights being violated by the state, but the attorney gets more money when their rights weren't violated? I, I never understood that, but that's the case. Now, Andrew Henderson hasn't sued, as far as I know, yet Ramsey County, uh, but he should. I, I believe he should, and I believe he's going to. But there's just an example, actually Little Canada also, but there's just an example of what needs to happen uh, uh, when these type of injustices are taking place. So just a little update there uh, on what's going on in that case and around the world. And, of course, in this case in Baltimore, they're saying now they're changing all the police training. You can't arrest somebody for filming out in public. Uh, especially a police officer, you can't, you just can't do it, or a sheriff or anybody. And of course, that's common sense, but you know, our public officials aren't being taught common sense. Um, all right, um, I went down to film at the legislature uh, the anti bullying bill, and really the title of this section should be Senator Torres Ray Bullies Through the Anti Bullying Bill. And unfortunately, I can't show you the whole uh, hearing, and I don't believe it was taped, but I have it taped, the whole hearing. And just the back and forth that went on when Taurus Ray would say, yeah, we're going to have a hearing at 6 o'clock to continue this so people could give testimony. And the legislators were going, hey, we want to talk about the changes in the bill. Do we talk before? Or are we going to end the session in, in 45 minutes and we don't get to propose our amendments to the bill? 
it was just fascinating dialogue about procedure, but also about lack of procedure. And Taurus Ray was talking out of both sides of her mouth, and so she agreed to continue the hearing at 6 o'clock so other people could testify, and then so that the legislatures can get their amendments, proposed amendments to the bill in. And then when the hearing was done in the afternoon, she said, okay, we're done. No hearing at 6. And that created an uproar. You know, so, I mean, is her word any good? Plus, she put the bill and changes to the bill in in less than 24 hours' notice, and that you're supposed to give that. And she was making statements like, no, we have never, ever followed that rule, and the Republicans never, ever followed that rule. I mean, she made statements like that. Now, those are bullying type of statements, in my opinion, when you can say, well, sometimes you guys didn't do it either. That would be more accurate. But never, ever, you know, it was just amazing to watch. But we're going to show a clip here of Senator Chamberlain, uh, who's uh, part of his areas in the White Bear Lake area, and he talks about some of the issues and, and procedures and the changes uh, that took place that they didn't know about. But I want you to pay attention to the issue of no administrator left behind. So let's hear what Senator Chamberlain has to say. Instructed here, we've been talking about the letters and, and um, comments you made. Uh, we have a four page, you had said we had passed this bill as is last year. Right, we passed it in you know, House File 826 last year. We have now been presented, folks, with four pages of mistakes. Four pages of mistakes in that bill. But it passed out of here, almost passed on the floor. But here are four pages of mistakes. And of the mistakes in here, there's some major issues. But most of the issues I've been hearing about, Madam Chair, members, have to do with implementing and how good it's going to be for the administrators. Nothing substantially changed in this bill to address the, the trouble that's going to cause our kids. This is about the innocence of your kids, and nothing in this bill has been done to address that. We have a good bill to prevent bullying. Senator Nelson, and I signed the other bill. But these changes are mostly clerical, administrative, technical things with a few maids and shells changed to address the needs of our administrators. That's something. We passed it out of here. It was okay. But now we come back, four pages of changes, and we're supposed to somehow believe that this is now good. And most of those changes are for administrators. We have a bill that addresses all students Text of parents and students. This bill helped out the administrators. Thank you. Well, of course, when it comes to money and policy, there's no administrator left behind. That's, that's really what happens in a lot of these bills. It's not about your children. It's not about the kids. It's not about parental rights. It's about the administrators and what they get out of the deal. And here, these changes were at the last minute. Many of them just got them less than hours before the hearing uh, because of the way they're delivered. And uh, Senator Chamberlain spoke up uh, about it. He talked about letters, and somebody read a whole bunch of letters of people in support, and one of those was from the University of Minnesota. But the University of Minnesota didn't write a letter. Um, and Senator Ness Nelson, they wrote a letter, but they weren't in support of it. They weren't against it either, but they had, they had problems with the bill, and Senator Nelson addressed those issues uh, before the committee and called them out on it. And that's what, and Senator Chamberlain said, yeah, okay, we got the letter issue that these recommendations, you're not saying they are, these recommendations are as they really are. You're misleading, and that's what Senator Chamberlain was also saying. You're also misleading on, on what this bill is about. You've changed it but you're saying it's the same bill. That's the type of stuff that was going on all day in that hearing. Um, so parents, you, you need to find out what's going on with this anti-bullying bill, House File 826. Uh, so that's just a little clip. Eventually I'll get the whole hearing on the internet so you can watch it uh, because I do not believe that that hearing was filmed. 
Uh, and next goes to the Finance Committee, and there's going to be more fireworks there. <laughs> so that will be good to watch. Another hearing that took place, um, of course, that hearing was on Tuesday. A hearing that took place Wednesday was to take away your right to vote. There was a judicial constitutional, as a constitutional amendment to change the structure of voting for the judiciary. And um, I went down to test film and to testify on this bill. And I'm just going to tell you, I got, in my opinion, harassed by the chair. You had all these people saying how good the bill is and how good our judiciary is. And they're wonderful and we're the best in the nation and, and therefore the world. And they're just all this praise. And I actually called it the Minnesota, uh, it's, it's our Minnesota judiciary has turned into a religious cult you know, with all this praise and lack of accountability. And, and, of course, they didn't like that. The legislature didn't like that. But I was making despairing remarks about our judiciary, and they didn't like that. And so the, you can make good comments about our judiciary, and you never had the chair jumping in and saying, uh, could you please talk about the bill? But when I made despairing remarks... They tried to say, talk about the bill. And you're going to see that in an example that comes up, but it's not me. Uh, here, somebody else testified and made a disparage comment. So we don't have this free speech rights. You only can say something positive about the judiciary. And, and so the first time I said, yeah, I'm speaking about the bill here. This is about the bill. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I made some more comments about how bad our judiciary is. And it says, would you please speak about the bill? I was interrupted again. And I said, so uh, help me out here. I, I implied this. But I said, so it's okay to say something good about the judiciary, but you can't say something bad in the basis. I'm trying to lay a foundation here like they laid a foundation that our judiciary is good. I'm laying a foundation that it's not good. There's problems that need to be addressed. And this does not address the problems that you think need to be addressed. And so four times I think I was interrupted. Well, I, I admit I got a little flustered. I lost my place. I couldn't think about what I was going to say or wanted to say. I thought about it. It flew from my mind, and I just finally had to stop. Of course, I, I did go a little long. I admit that, and, and I stopped. But then up came Bob Auden from the Libertarian Party, and he said, everything I wanted to say <laughs> in a shorter amount of time, and he said it better than I was going to say it. So we're going to play his clip of what he had to say. So here's Bob. Uh, Bob Auden, I'm uh, representing the Libertarian Party of Minnesota. Uh, we find this to be a very dangerous bill. Uh, the problem that seems to be correcting is, is that it's trying to assist voters because voters don't vote for judges. but. When you go to the, the, the problem really is, is that our judges are appointed rather than elected, even though we have this so-called election. Uh, the governor appoints them midterm. Uh, the judges don't complete their term. And then when they come up for election at, at the next election cycle, uh, we have the word incumbent on the ballot. And no lawyer wants to run against an incumbent because if they lose, there's going to be retribution. So that's why there's no one else on the ballot. Uh, and people really don't want to vote for these positions because they don't know anything about them. Uh, if uh, the Minnesota Supreme Court would simply allow information uh, to be uh, given to the public within this uh, this could be remedied. Uh, the, uh, and we know that this does work because in this last election cycle, uh, where there was an actual open seat created, so there was no incumbent judge, we have about 25 people running for that slot. Um, so you don't have just the one person running, you had a whole slew of people running. Uh, and people did know about these judges. They got out, they were able to talk about themselves to some extent. Uh, and, and, and that's good. That's a check and balance on the judiciary. Because we know that there are people out there, uh, 
And, and since the Minnesota Supreme Court has lost cases concerning elections here in Minnesota at the U.S. Supreme Court, we know they're not particularly good at interpreting the Constitution. Uh, otherwise, they would have lost these cases. Mr. Uh, Odin, I'd encourage you, just as I did previous testifiers, to keep your comments directed to the bill, please. Well, I am, yeah, because the Minnesota Supreme Court here is, is going to be helping to determine who the judges are going to be, uh, how they're going to be evaluated. Uh, and they have a bias. I mean, judges are simply politicians in black robes. <coughs> So they're going to be, among other politicians, determining exactly who we're, we're going to have for judges. And uh, you know, if they don't like somebody's opinion, uh, like say they, uh, they know somebody's for the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, well, they're, they're simply never going to be sitting on the courts. The court will be stacked. Uh, was it, and they're going to get preferences, like say, to minorities. Well. Minorities vote Democrat. Uh, so th these people are going to be uh, uh, basically uh, hold the uh, opinions of the, the Democrat Party. Uh, and I certainly know that libertarians will never be included among minorities. Uh, the judicial performance evaluation, which has to be approved by the Minnesota Supreme Court, I mean, it's all subjective. Uh, the uh, what was it, being punctual? I mean, that's really laughable. Or the uh, uh, communication skills? Uh, you know, the, the real problem is, is, is just simply, uh, is, is the uh, Minnesota Supreme Court. Uh, if they would simply allow us to have free judicial elections in the state of Minnesota, then we would have uh, voters that were informed. We would have uh, people that would actually be voting on these positions. Uh, and I know that the, this amendment is being considered because the Minnesota Supreme Court has lost at the U.S. Supreme Court. And, and so they want to rectify that by passing this amendment so that it can go back to the old way of doing things where uh, judges didn't have to uh, uh, run for re-election. They were appointed based on campaign contributions or whatever. Uh, it's all about power, uh, money, and control. Uh, and I strongly urge the committee here to uh, uh, vote this amendment down. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Odin. Well, what you didn't see, and I appreciate his testimony, he was right on. Of course, he got harassed, too, uh, because he said some despairing comments uh, that our Supreme Court is not particularly good. Of course, the U.S. Supreme Court also said that. I mean, when you lose, you know, it's, it's parsing things out there a little bit, but um, it's a valid point. Uh, and, of course, the whole issue there is our Supreme Court doesn't believe in free speech for judges or uh, people running for judge. And he was absolutely right. This is an attempt to, to avoid the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in another way. Um, what, else, what happened while he was speaking, three, ran, uh, three state patrol officers came into the room, and I go, okay, they're there because of what I said. I don't know what I said that would qualify for them coming, but they came in the room. That was just an educated guess on my part. And uh, so, you know, I kept filming. I didn't do anything wrong. And so then uh, uh, later on when I was down the floor in the Capitol, uh, I saw they had a security walk by, and I talked to her the night before. I was filming the anti-bullying bill. And so she stopped and asked me a few questions, uh, uh, you know, about the filming the night before and then said, oh, be, and then she goes, oh, be careful what you say uh, when you give testimony. <laughs> and I go, well, what are you talking about? Well, didn't you give testimony? Something to that effect. Didn't you give testimony? Yeah. Well, you just be careful what you say. Well, what I say? You know, and she goes, and I said, well, you know, watch the video. I got the video here. I'll give you a copy of the DVD. What, what did I do? She goes, well, I haven't seen it yet. Well, what's that about? You know, why should I be careful about what I say 
And why should I take your warning when you haven't even seen it? And, of course, I don't. I did nothing wrong. And so we'll, we'll see what happens with this. She does say she lives in the area, and um, she's probably working tonight, but we'll watch my show. <laughs> so maybe I got a new viewer here. Okay, well, um, that's what's happening down at the Capitol, um, and it's dangerous, folks. I'm afraid. I've never been so afraid in my life. I know what's going on. Parental rights are just getting uh, trampled under really, really bad. Uh, I'm going to bring up one more issue before we get to our discussion on the bill to ban on change ther the ban on change therapy. Um, <clears throat> uh, there's a website called LifeNews.com. It's all about uh, abortion-related issues, and part of the problems with the uh, abortion industry is they don't do what they're supposed to do. Uh, by law. So parents of an 11-year-old girl in West Virginia have been arrested after arranging for an abortion following a case of pregnancy after possible incest. And West Virginia State Police say they consented to the abortion and the abortion clinic in question didn't report the abortion to authorities. They're required by law when there's a minor, uh, underage minor, it's a statutory rape, they're required by law to report it, but these abortion clinics don't do it. A number have been caught. They just don't do it. And, uh, and the, the real problem here is this child is possibly, it was an incest issue, okay? And they're still researching that, but because of the way the parents played this out, after the abortion, they took her to the hospital to do a DNC, got rid of a lot of the evidence. They, that's why they have to report it because there's a, you can get rid of a lot of evidence because you have DNA to deal with. Uh, so an 11-year-old pregnant, and they think it's the father, got arrested anyway. It may not be, who knows, but it's a huge, huge problem. Uh, but remember, this is what's going on. This is what the... Uh, 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 anti-bullying bill and the Common Core stuff is going on. Oh, and I want to bring this up. You see the graphic under there. We got a pre-recorded show that I did about um, uh, sodomy, health, and money. And um, I just haven't had time to do everything that's going on. But I, so this one, and it should, it's for adults only. However, your kids are being taught this stuff. We're showing you what your kids are being taught about sodomy, about what's going on in the public schools with Common Core curriculum, with the anti-bullying, and it will shock you. It will literally shock you. It's for adults. That's why I'm not really showing it right now, but you can go to that YouTube link uh, there and go watch the show. It'll scare you to death. It's meant to. It's scary. Um, and you'll get your kids out of public school, uh, definitely. All right, we have a caller calling in. So, caller, do you have a uh, comment or a question? Thanks for calling. Well, Tim Kinley, I have a question. Yeah. The question I have is, you just cited an example of an 11-year-old who was a victim of incest, and she had an abortion. And, you, of course, you realize that's kind of a, a very tragic situation, not only for the, for the poor child that's been traumatized, but also if that child was born, the, the, the problem of birth defects that, that could follow that. So if you could react to that question, I'll hang up and listen. Well, and uh, the birth defects you, ha you have no idea about, and that doesn't mean you end a life. Uh, a lot of times abortion doctors go in and say you're pregnant, when you're not, and they have abortions on women who aren't even pregnant. And you know why? Because they get the money. That's been what's been told by abortion doctors. So a birth defect doesn't mean you abort a child. There's a lot of people that take children with birth defects and will adopt them. Uh, so it's just not a reason. And of course it was, they may have. Well, 11 year olds, just because your mom's 11 year old doesn't mean you have birth defects. And it, it's rare that it happens. Um, the, another issue here is if the father did commit incest, he's getting off scot-free. 
this guy needs to be hung out to dry. I mean, you know, I mean, he needs to be, you know, prosecuted. He needs to spend some time in jail thinking about what he did. And this is terrible. We don't do this to our children. Uh, but we can teach it to our children, as we're finding out in our schools. Well, Carter, thanks for the call. I probably didn't answer your question adequately, and that's probably because I want to get on to our main subject here. Uh, the beginning of the show took a lot, little bit longer than I wanted to. But I want to introduce my guest here, um, Kevin Peterson from profamilyforum.org, as you would call it. And you have a lot of information on this ban on change therapy bill that's going through. And uh, you see the numbers there on our, our graphic there. For, and again, people, you can call into the show. You know what? I figured out that graphic doesn't have our phone number on there. So it needs to be put on there somehow if you want to call in with questions. But Kevin, what is uh, Pro Family Forum? What, what, what are they about? Who are they? Well, <clears throat> it is a group of uh, families and even some uh, representatives in Minnesota who put this group together to support sexual orientation change efforts, S-O-C-E, sexual orientation change efforts. And it is a valid treatment by um, psychologists and psychiatrists uh, the world over. And recently that particular therapy was banned in California for minors okay, and right. eventually to um, New Jersey. And they want to ban it here in Minnesota as well. There is a House bill and a Senate bill. And uh, this is, as I said, a valid uh, treatment for people with unwanted same-sex attraction. I mean, if somebody has uh, uh, gay feelings and they want them and they don't think it's a problem, first of all, you Why you would can't, you go to therapy? <laughs> right, you wouldn't go to therapy, and you certainly uh, uh, wouldn't benefit from such a therapy anyway. Uh, but that's not what this is about. It's only for those who choose this and for parents who choose this uh, for, their, for adolescent children. And it's, a, like I said, a valid uh, treatment. Well, this, this, this has been going on for quite a long time, this mm -hmm. type of therapy and treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, is it routine, would you mm -hmm. say? I mean, yes. it's, it's done all over. With uh, varying degrees of success. Sure. For about 30 years now. Well, some therapists are better than others. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, uh, and, the, and, a, and a bad therapist may have good success. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, how do we qu qualify and quantify that? Um, but, but it sounds like your group, well, not only pr promoting um, this type of therapy, uh, you're also opposing laws that are trying to outlaw yes. this therapy. So it's a double negative. We are right. opposed to a ban. <laughs> and it is very important to me because I benefited from this same kind of therapy. Because mm -hmm. I used to be gay and very active in the gay community when I was in the, my 20s back in the uh, 80s. And I got this therapy eh, starting in my late 20s, early 30s. Once I learned about it and benefited from it, <laughs> I wish I had that same kind of therapy when I was in my teens. Be because you benefited from it? Mm -hmm. I mean... Yes. I mean, it was a notable difference in your life. Very much so. Because it, I understood why, and what were the causes of my same-sex attraction, which are different for, di for different people. And, and this is not for everybody. Everybody uh, with uh, gay feelings uh, will not benefit. Only some will benefit from it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are people who are happy in their gay lifestyle, and they're going along, and they're they're happy, and that's not what this this therapy is for. Mm -hmm. It is specifically for people with unwanted same sex attractions. Well, for you, though, I mean, 
my understanding from what you've told me prior is that you were very active in the pro-homosexual community. And maybe that's not the right way to say it, mm -hmm. but very active uh, politically, protesting, mm -hmm. yes. doing whatever. So you presented yourself in a way that this is who you were. Mm -hmm. But were you saying that was not who you were? Or, or what, just was, what was well, going on there? <laughs> I like to call myself gay because I was. I was gay, after all, which means that I was happy. And mm -hmm. I marched in a couple of pride parades in Minneapolis, one in even in New York City, mm -hmm. uh, because, after all, I was proud of mm -hmm. my gayness mm -hmm. and my happiness. Sure. Well, I wasn't. It oh. just wasn't for me. I was always uncomfortable with it. I, it, again, just me. I was uncomfortable with that, uh, with that lifestyle, and I wanted to change, and I wanted out. And I got this therapy. Found out why it worked for me, and uh, uh, have benefited mm -hmm. uh, greatly. I've married the most beautiful woman in the world and we have three children of our own mm -hmm. now going to be teenagers pretty soon so maybe they're not the most beautiful children in the world. <laughs> you mean <clears throat> in different ways well yes i'm, I'm not as <laughs> smart as i used to be now they're, that humans. They're, they're humans right <laughs> <laughs> now that they're teenagers they're smarter than i yeah uh, okay <laughs> um well you mentioned that this passed in a number of states yes uh, but have there been states where it has been tried to pass and hasn't? Yes. One uh, recently, uh, Washington State. They, it, uh, Which it is didn't surprising to me. I'm from Washington State, grew up there. My family's still back there. Oh. It was just over there last week. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't mention this, but Washington State's a very liberal state. Mm -hmm. Very liberal. Uh, mm -hmm. It's kind of borderline, but it's kind of like Minnesota. And right now the liberals are in charge there, so I'm surprised it didn't pass. Well, I'm not, because this really is not so much conservative and liberal issue anyway, because oh. uh, there are these counselors, these uh, psychologists who work mm -hmm. with sexual orientation change mm -hmm. effort, also have among their clients gays who are happy being gay, but they have other issues, whether it be you know, depression or, or um, anger issues, whatever. And these counselors see them for that and work with them and are not trying to change them, change their orientation. Mm -hmm. Because uh, these, these psychologists understand if you want to be gay, go ahead. There's nothing uh, psychologically wrong with it. There's not, it's not a disease uh -huh. of the mind. Uh -huh. It's just that some people, they want a therapy on how to deal with it. Uh -huh. And there are not that many of them, but enough of them. Uh -huh. <coughs> well, so this bill is really, it, it's more about the therapist yes. than anybody else. I mean, if I wanted to counsel somebody, you oh, know, I see. who's, who's, um, uh, gay, or they ask me questions about sexuality, mm -hmm. can I still talk to them and say, hey, here's my opinion, here's what I think, here's how, you know, I, I want to treat this, uh, not treat it, here's my view. Yes. Can I, and, and <coughs> guide them in, yes. in, in my beliefs. What, do mm -hmm. I still get to do that? Yeah, good, a good scenario would be... Um, <coughs> Uh, Pastor Tim, you, you've got your own uh, mm -hmm. your own uh, church, and you have a teenager or parents who have a teenager who has these feelings, and you want to pray about it and discuss the Bible. That's fine, but you would not be trained on how to deal with trauma. Mm -hmm. In quite a few cases, somebody may have same-sex attractions because they were abused as a child. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, eight or nine years old, and here it is um, five, six years later, and they're having these attractions. They don't like it. And you should be able to say, well, you know, I have a doctor, Dr. Bob. He's a good friend of mine, and uh, maybe you should talk to him, and I'll introduce you. And, and you have your own Rolodex. Uh, I don't know if you still have one of those. But you, you'd look <laughs> well, it up, a, and you'd say, here's doctor. Here's his uh, number, and you write down his number, hand it to him, and uh, refer 
him to a specialist who is in agreement with your uh, religious, religious beliefs, beliefs okay. and not a counselor who is gay affirming and telling him that they, he was born this way and that there he has uh, um, <clears throat> these feelings because this is the way he is and will be for the rest of his life. Uh, a counselor may meet with him and find out that, hey, you know, he's, he's okay with these feelings and, uh, and then send him back to you. Or if a parent, if parents bring in a, a, a teenager to one mm -hmm. of these psychologists and says, you know, we want you to straighten him out. He's got these feelings and by gum, you better straighten him out. Well, the counselor would talk to mom and dad and then meet with the, uh, with the uh, patient one-on-one uh, -on -one and, uh, and find out from him, well, you know, my, uh, my mom and dad are on me and I just don't like it. And, you know, these are my feelings and this is the way I like it. And I'm not having problems with my same-sex attraction. I'm having mm -hmm. problems with mom and dad telling me I'm going to go to hell. And, then I'm, and, and the uh, psychologist is required to dismiss this, talk to mom and dad, and said, well, I think you need to uh, be more patient uh, with him and uh, be more understanding. If he were to continue to counsel him against his wills and wishes, that would be an ethics violation. Oh, wow. and mm -hmm. and uh, uh, an ethics violation would be filed at, a, at the state level. Uh huh. Because that would be wrong. Well, he the, could lose his license. The, for the that. child would have to go and do that. The child would have to complain someplace. Mm -hmm. And most likely, a child wouldn't know about that. But that's in any situation. That doesn't. That's just not this form of therapy. Mm -hmm. It's any other. Yes issue or subject of therapy um, so and you can't there's no way to deal with that except let people know that hey you know if you're a child and your therapist is going against your wishes uh, and forcing you to do something well and unfortunately you have therapists that abuse kids what well, you know yes and and parents as we talked <coughs> uh, as I said earlier in the show the 11 year old that got raped uh, or at least father's being accused of this. Mm -hmm. uh, well, she was definitely raped. She's 11 years old, mm -hmm. but um, who actually did it. Uh, so these type of abuses go on, and it's a, a violation of ethics, so that happens anyway. So what I'm hearing you saying is this is a well-established practice, mm -hmm. and there are protections built into the system yes. to stop abuses or to help stop abuses. Why take away the right of parents or even teenagers to get this kind of help? Right. <clears throat> this is one of those uh, issues that involves a lot of things, you know, freedom of speech, and, you know, First Amendment, and parental rights. This tramples on a lot of those things. Well, it, it seems to be that way. Uh, and this will redefine therapy. If, if therapy is redefined in this sense uh, for this banning this change therapy, mm -hmm. doesn't that put a severe restriction on the ability of the psychologist or psychotherapist to practice, to really help the child? Is this a form of, and another, another way to frame it, the terminology that's thrown out there a lot is best practices. Oh. Are they going to say, here's the best practice. If you don't practice this way, then you're harming the child when, in fact, you really aren't harming the child. That's you're right. really helping them. So what kind of restrictions do you guys see is this going to do to therapy in general? Well, uh, there is that quote from the American oh. College. Let's put up graphic eight, okay, uh, and get that on the screen, and we'll do this quote. So okay. go ahead with it. Oh yes, the American College of Pediatricians urges Minnesota legislators to refrain from legislating psychotherapy. There is not a single randomized control study demonstrating universal failure and or harm from sexual orientation change efforts. However, there is a body of literature demonstrating a variety of positive outcomes from SOCE. So nothing in the negative, 
mm -hmm. a lot in the positive, but legislating psychotherapy. Yes, because you will have these anecdotal uh, stories of people who were harmed either by a preacher or by a psychologist. And again, there's something in place to remedy that. It's well, an ethics board. Right. I remember seeing a clip on um, TV where this guy goes in. He was gay, but he's pretended he wanted change. And so this guy's giving him some therapy, mm -hmm. but he never wanted to change. And he, you know, this gets all over the news and stuff like that. Oh. So it wasn't really a real scenario, but they just pounded on this therapist for trying to force this guy to change. And he wasn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the kid said he wanted to change, so he's trying to help him and give him tools and resources and, and thought processes. Isn't that what therapists do? That's when right. Somebody <laughs> With a varying degree of success. Uh huh. And uh, you know, people have a, a variety of issues that uh, they bring to a psychologist, and uh, he works with them. He doesn't give them a, a pill to mm -hmm. solve the problem right away. Well, so what, what I'm hearing you saying here is people that complain that, that this form of therapy has hurt, it, hurt them, mm -hmm. they have solutions. They, they need to report a therapist who's harming them. Yes. I mean, that's just standard anyway. A person mm -hmm. needs to know if your therapist is doing you harm, you need to report it. Yes. doesn't matter what it is. And if you feel you've been abused in a, in a scenario like that, well, then uh, file an ethics complaint. You don't just ban the entire procedure. And... I can't uh, emphasize enough how much this benefited me. Uh, there's not enough time on your show to go into the details of some of the things I learned about my lifestyle and about my childhood and my teen years. When I met or I heard from these, uh, these therapists, I thought they were following me around when I was a little kid. Oh, really? Said, how did you know that? Well, this is one of the things... <laughs> No, really? And he's, well, yeah. Did this happen and this and this and this? Well, yeah, but I never told you that. Uh, yeah, that'd be a whole nother show. <laughs> <laughs> that would be. Uh, and it, there are different scenarios, different stories, right. different causes, different effects, and uh, different uh, contributors. They're not all the same. But there are these general rules. And uh, to, to take this... To deny this mm -hmm. therapy for moms and dads and for teens. There mm -hmm. are teenagers, 14 years old, and eh, I have these feelings, and I want to deal with them. Yeah, And right. up until now, I've been you know, from television and from uh, uh, guidance counselors at school, I was told that this is who I am for the rest of my life. Uh -huh. Get used to it. I want to have some options here. I want to be able to talk. Why does this matter? to the Minnesota Senate and the Minnesota House. Why do they care? Well, the presumption is that these kids are, um, are being hurt, and they're just going there to protect these kids. Is, isn't that the assumption? Anytime yes. a law is passed, it's, used, it's passed to define relationships right. and to help people work together. That's the purpose. So there's protection in this bill. Okay. Isn't that the purpose, is to yes. really help minors? And their motives are uh, very sincere, I'm sure, mm -hmm. because of the stories they've heard about this is what happened to me and, uh, uh -huh. and so on. And, uh, and they're going to be preachers out there. There are going to be parents out there who will say, you're going to go to hell. You get out of my house if you're going to. And that's not what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about uh, this pray the gay away in these uh, ministries. Uh -huh. that, they're, they're separate. And, and I, but, I've but, met but, a lot of great guys uh -huh. in uh, this uh, play, uh, this group called Outpost. It's a uh -huh. Minnesota group, and they're just good guys, and they work with people spiritually and pray with them about how to live a chaste life. Uh -huh. Courage does that in the uh, Catholic Church, and 
it's not about change. Those groups don't uh, talk about you better change or you're going to go to hell. They, that's not what they're about. But that's separate. That has nothing to do with this bill and what they want to ban. Oh, okay. It has nothing to yeah, do with sure. these religions and their different groups. And yeah, they can continue. But that's not what this is about. It is licensed uh, psychologists. <laughs> All of a sudden, this thought process came in my <laughs> Head. You know, I think a lot of these judges could sit down with some licensed psychologist <laughs> and do them some good. Uh, not on this issue. No, uh, no. Some, yeah, but okay, that's just me. Uh, okay, uh, I may get in trouble there. Um, so it's about the therapist and their freedom to counsel as they see best for the children. And of course, on my show last week, we talked about doctors and the Hippocratic Oath, that they no longer have to take that. They're trying to get doctors away from it, and really only about 11% of doctors have even taken the Hippocratic Oath that are practicing today. So it's no longer about the client. Oh, okay. It's about the money. It's about the licensing. It's about uh, the health insurance company. It's about getting paid rather than helping the client. So I'm, I'm hearing a sense of this bill is doing the same thing. It's doing the, um, it's not about the kids. It's about the outcome we want to have as a state. We want a different outcome than what these therapists see as being in the best interest of the children. Uh, do you get that sense? Did that make sense with all that? Well, they don't trust parents. Uh huh. I'll just okay. And they and they should. They should leave this up to the parents, who really do care about uh, their children. Mm hmm. And uh, of course, you're going to find scenarios like this. Well, uh, yeah. This guy, of course, you know, incest. But you don't make a law for the exception. Right. <laughs> And, uh, you know, if a, a dentist happens to uh, um, uh, abuse a female mm -hmm. uh, patient, you don't make a law that says that uh, male, male yeah. uh, that a male dentist cannot have a single female with, he's got to have someone in the, yeah, you don't make laws like that. You've got mm -hmm. ethics boards to deal with that kind of, of uh, outrage. It, it, so it's, it's being prescriptive it's it's acting before something's actually happening oh okay you know it's this under the intent of our constitutions is that we have these liberties and they don't get taken away until you've proven to ha harm somebody oh. else okay. and so if a if a child is coming and saying to the psychotherapist I, I need help with this. I don't know how to process this or how I want to. And the therapist helps them through that process and finds out, you know, I don't like what I'm doing or I don't like the thoughts I have. Then that therapist can't help them in this issue. Yes, and when the message I got from the therapist is <laughs> you're really not all that screwed up. It's understandable why you have these uh, attractions sure. and they explained why and you have to understand why and, and what you're thinking at oh so I'm really not uh, evil and uh, mm -hmm. and, and I didn't change my orientation overnight it, mm -hmm. it this it was kind of a aircraft carrier having to turn on a dime it took mm -hmm. some time to do that and it, it wasn't easy and mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, helped greatly by this, uh, this therapy. I, I was talking to somebody today when I bring up this issue. I talked to a lot of people and because I know not just you but other people who have um, changed their viewpoint, changed their lifestyle, if you want to put it that way, mm -hmm. um, have changed from the homosexual lifestyle to a heterosexual <laughs> lifestyle and people are surprised. They go, that can't happen. It doesn't happen. I've never mm -hmm. heard of it happening. And I'm going, well, why? Because you're being <coughs> told that it doesn't happen, it can't happen. And so you obviously are an exception to the rule. Or is it, 
it does happen and does happen mm -hmm. a lot more than people think. Yes, there are uh, several websites out there that chronicle these stories uh, of people who have left and bold enough to come forward. Uh, Voice of the Voiceless mm. is another um, website uh, mm -hmm. that, <laughs> the stories of uh, various uh, people, men and women alike, and they are brave uh, to mm -hmm. come forward because talking about sexuality is in itself awkward, right? Especially in churches or among family members, right? <clears throat> These are things that uh, are uh -huh. are difficult, but I cannot stress how important it is to put a stop to these bills. Mm -hmm. People must contact our website. There's a link to the petition. Sign the petition. It will take all of about. Um, 25 seconds to do it. Okay, and you have a vote no petition. There it is on the web, uh, on, on the screen there, profamilyforum.org. So go to the yes. profamilyforum.org and you'll find the petition there to go sign. Yes, you're putting in your address and zip code, and it will automatically send it to your state rep and your state senator and to the governor. Okay. And uh, the last I looked, it also um, sends it to each member of both committees that are going to hear this. Okay. And get your friends to sign on to this. We need to get this grass fire going. Right. And uh, every, every petition signer it helps us out a lot. They need to hear from us mm, how right. important it is. Right. Get on that petition. It's, it's, it's very important. Uh, so I urge you viewers out there to call your friends. Uh, and there's the bill numbers too, House File 1906. Go to the legislative website and put that in as one of your bills. You'll get emails if, there, if uh, there's going to be a hearing on this. And, of course, you're getting less than 24 hours notice now by the legislatures when these hearings are coming up. I've just had two bills that have had that happen huge important bills so there's an effort there to to um, not allow this free speech to happen so that people can be aware of what's taking place also senate file 1727 is the senate version of the house version of this bill uh, and and specifically let's readdress the problems with this bill again okay Parental rights is one, so what's... Uh, parental rights, uh, freedom of speech, and uh, freedom of religion. As I said, I mentioned earlier, pastors will no longer be able to refer a minor to a counselor who is consistent with that pastor's uh, teachings and beliefs. And, uh, and uh, minors also will not have the right to seek counseling. They'll have to wait until they're 18. <laughs> like I said, if I was... I got this counseling when I was late 20s, early 30s. I wish I had it when I was 15. My whole life would have been a lot happier for me. And, and I know gay guys, I still have friends who are mm -hmm. gay lifestyle and they're happy. Well, fine with them. Mm -hmm. They don't seek out this counseling and I don't think they need to. Well, and, and in our <clears throat> culture, you, you, you don't do that. You <laughs> don't force somebody to do what they no. don't want to do, except here we're forcing therapies to not do what their clients want to do okay. and talk. Mm -hmm. so. and, and people also have this idea that it's some kind of shock therapy, which okay. I think they, they do over in uh, uh, Eastern Europe or some countries, I don't know, where they strap them to a chair and they show pornographic, well, yes, actually, yeah. uh, pornographic images. and uh, That's not what this is about. Yeah, but electroshock therapy is happening, mm -hmm. not on this issue, but to <laughs> no. other people. Still. No, but that, not, again, this, ha this has nothing to do with that kind okay. of therapy because right. it doesn't work for one thing. Yeah, but it's also cruel and uh, not beneficial to the patient. Yeah, so th it's it's not about that, and mm -hmm. it's certainly not pray the gay away. Th mm -hmm. That's th that has nothing to do with this. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> it's about the therapists. Yes, and their freedom to mm -hmm. to uh, mm -hmm. do their business and to help mm -hmm. their clients yeah. for the best interest of their client. Yeah, <laughs> just wow what a what a huge attack now okay we only got about a minute left here a minute and a half so anything you just kind of want to summarize and uh, that you haven't said or just kind of there are people uh christopher doyle uh and uh, uh david pickup his name is just like that a pickup truck okay these are 
uh, licensed uh, psychologists who are trained in this effort, and those also benefited from the same therapy. Mm -hmm. They used to be uh, active in the gay lifestyle, and they left it behind, studied this, and this is their line of work. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, Voice of the Voiceless is that uh, okay. group, that name of that group. And uh, these stories are all over the place, all over the internet, of people who've just... Uh, have decided to work on it, mm -hmm. and it, and many of the stories were not easy. But get on, get on our website, profamilyforum.org, and sign that petition, uh, and tell your friends. Well, and that's the other thing. You may you may have a friend that is uh, looking for help, mm -hmm. and so your your website will also help them get some direction. Yes, there are links to the various groups who actually okay. do this. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So if you want to get out of that lifestyle or just want to understand maybe something took place, maybe you don't want to, but mm -hmm. you know something took place in your life. Uh -huh. Maybe you were abused as a child um, or, or whatever, and there's just something that took place. You may want to just talk to somebody because of that experience mm -hmm. and say, well, this wasn't right. I haven't dealt with it yet, and I need to. Yeah. So... You're there for support. Yes. <laughs> also. Yes. Kevin, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Folks, um, got to protect your kids. Got to do what's necessary for them. Remember, if you don't stand up for other people's liberties, who's going to stand up for yours? And good men don't do nothing. God bless. Have a great week. Sets on fire